and uh, we'll talk about his high top. So, uh, Gavio, welcome to the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank and you uh, why don't we go inside and take a look around? All right. So here we are. We're inside, uh, inside your Astro. And man, I've never seen anything like it. It's really amazing what you've done here. Thank you. And we learned in the interview that you, your background, uh, a lot of it is in interior design. That's correct. And so I can just, <laughs> I see it everywhere I look. Well, I have a degree in engineering and a degree in interior design. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it all kind of comes together. So uh, <laughs> just walk us through it because it's just okay. uh, everywhere I look, I'm amazed. So this is my, it's actually a GMC Safari for the record. Oh, Same mm -hmm. as an Astro van, but right. just saying. And... Um, I've had it for about five years now, and I've been building on it for a fair amount of that time. So um, basically it was just a plain passenger van when I got it. It was completely beige. Everything was beige. And I really don't like beige much. So, <laughs> so one of the things that I knew was going to happen was that there was going to be colors. The other thing that I knew was that I really wanted to make a complete camper, um, you know, sort of a Westphalia style thing. So and that's what I see everywhere I look, Westphalia. Thanks. Yeah. And, um, you know, but I wanted the reliability and the, you know, affordability of the Astro van platforms. So, so that's how this, um, that's how this got concocted. And um, I knew all along that I wanted to have a pop top, but I had no idea how I was going to pull that off. And because the van was my daily driver at the time, I kept sort of working on it. I'd pull something apart, then I'd have to put it back together again and whatever. So starting with sort of the main, the main nugget of the, uh, of the camper part, um, we have this, this unit which contains the two burner stove and the sink. And um, I have a 12 volt refrigerator here. I have a composting toilet here and um, uh, the water supply. Um, and I did it with um, like one of the things that I wanted that I really uh, like about the way the Volkswagens are set up is that they have a really safe propane system with the tank underneath the van and you know, fully plumbed and all of that. And I really wanted that too. I also wanted a really robust electrical system. So I settled on a system using two six volt golf cart batteries mm -hmm. and uh, solar on the roof. So I have a controller and all my cabling goes kind of inside that cabinet there. Okay. And there um, is your composting toilet, which must be on slides. Uh, it's not quite that sophisticated, but yeah, you pull it out and it's basically in a five gallon bucket. Right. Um, and right now I'm using peat moss, but I think I'm going to try some other things because the peat moss gets this odd smell to it. It doesn't smell bad, but it smells a little bit like fertilizer, which is not ideal. But it has a it has a uh, vent fan that is controlled here, and that vents the you know. Uh, yeah, you it, can it see it the causes the air to circulate. Yeah, tube coming out. Yeah, exactly, and that goes to the outside of the van. Um, and of course the jug to uh, separate. Of course, yeah. Uh, composting requires separation. Yeah, exactly. And I have um, uh, I have a urine separator in the toilet as well because oh. sometimes, you know, this also all kind of closes up. Oh my. And it gives me a, and... um, a surface up there that I can either stow stuff on right. or, um, you know, work on. I can set my computer on it or... Brilliant. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Is that, is that plywood that's... This? Yeah. Okay, so this is actually a quarter-inch hardy backer. Um, the cement board that you use behind um, tile. Okay. And um, I picked that because it's behind the stove, and I just wanted something that couldn't catch on fire. And, um, and then I lined it with aluminum foil so that it would um, reflect the heat. Right. And uh, then the outside, um, all of the countertop material um, is a uh, horrible water-based epoxy stuff that I found. It's pretty good. Uh, the thing that I've noticed is that, um, and y this van is, it's a combination work van. I mean, it's everything. So things in here get abused. And what I've noticed is yeah. that sometimes it gets knocked hard it's enough and it'll, it'll pull. 
it'll pull off. And how do you add the color? You just mix in a, a paint or something? So all of the all of the color things that I make, um, I I make my own colors. I use dry pigments and metal powders, and um, and I make uh, I make my own colors for all these decorative finishes. And mm -hmm. and so something. all of them have this uh, different colors, but the exact same look. And it's all the uh, epoxy with the. Uh, oh no. You added. no! No, this stuff is not epoxy. This is a um, it's a non toxic um, water based lacquer substitute that I buy. It's made by a company called AFM Safe Coat. Um, so I think I mentioned in the other video I'm chemically sensitive, so oh. I have to be really careful what I use in my space. So um, so this stuff is great. It has a little bit of smell when I use it, but it dissipates immediately. And we'll see, you've got a lot of really nice custom upholstery. And did you do that or did you? I did. You did. You did all that. Yeah. yeah. No, I borrowed a sewing upholstery. machine and learned how to sew. And oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I did it because I knew eventually I was going to have to do the tent for the pop top. Right. And so, um, so yeah, so I borrowed a friend's sewing machine and I started with the curtains, um, which are insulated curtains. I use this fabric called Warm Windows, which um, you can buy online or at certain fabric stores. And it's like a five layer, five layer thing. It has, I don't know, it has like some batting and it has a piece of mylar and it has, I don't know, it's a great little concoction and it does a pretty good job of insulating. So anyway, so I started with those. That's where I learned how to sew. And then, um, then I did the cushions, mm -hmm. and uh, then I was ready for the pop top. You've done the uh, the front seats. No, oh, those I didn't upholster oh, didn't. those. I dyed them. Um, oh. They were uh, they were beige, and uh, but they are the seats that um, they are. Yeah, they're, oh, they're gorgeous. Out of an Astro van. You have tanks, a water fresh water tank underneath. Yeah, I have a 15 gallon water tank. When we get outside, I can show you all that. I have um, a standard RV pump, I assume. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of a small, inexpensive one because the 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 good ones are actually kind of large. Mm -hmm. Really and, more than um, you need. Yeah, exactly. All we need. Yeah, so I got um, I got one of the small, inexpensive ones off Amazon, and um, boy, it's been working like a champ. I have to say, it's a little noisy, but um, but it works great. And then this faucet, um, due to space constraints, I needed to fit it in just this exact because there's a lot of structure around that, and but I really wanted one with a sprayer. So I looked for a long, long time before I found this one. Part of the reason that I wanted to do propane is uh, for heat. Mm -hmm. So I got a Propex heater, um, uh -huh. which I know they're 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 really popular with the uh, with the Volkswagen Westie crowd. Very, very. And I have to tell you, I love the heck out of it. It's it's really it's a really good heater, and uh, uses very little electricity and very little propane. Well, for those who don't know, well. uh, describe what they are. So they're basically a small forced air furnace. Basically, it's in a little box about this big and it's practically zero clearance. I think it only needs one inch all the way around it because they use the heat energy so efficiently that they just don't, they're just not shedding a lot of heat out the sides of the unit. But they take their intake air and their combustion gas all come from outside, little tubes that go outside. So your inside air is um, is always, you know, is always clean. Being vented, they're very, very safe. Yeah, exactly. And that was important to me. Again, with the chemical sensitivities and right. whatever, I cannot use a catalytic heater. That just would not, right. it would not work for me. Okay, so then we have the bedroom area back here. Being built on the Westie model, I'm assuming the seat folds down and that becomes your bed. Yeah, I tried the bed um, three or four different ways, actually. First, I wanted to be able to sleep sideways in an Astro. Is that much too narrow it did not work for me so I tried a couple of different builds this way until I got it you know working really the way I want it and um, mostly my builds are about I built these these long boxes basically that the that the pieces of the seat slide in and I made it so that I could do a couple of things that I really wanted to do one was that I've, I've certainly camped and sometimes lived in vans for a number of years in the past and the issue was constantly finding level ground, or at least ground where my head would be higher than my feet. Right. Um, without having to constantly change my bed direction and move all my bedding around and all that. So, so I wanted to be able to um, have a system where one end of the bed moves up and down. 
And so I did that. So the head of my bed is actually adjustable. So if I'm on ground that I'm, you know, slanting uh, a little bit, I can get it to where my head is higher. So That's really nice. Yeah. That's so, a big deal. And that's part of why I made the bed system the way I did was so I could have the whole thing so that it could pivot up and down. And then I also made a, um, a little tent that goes over the back and I can actually make it into a bed and then push the whole bed back again. So I have this much clear space up oh here with the bed. So it's um, essentially a floating bed. Yeah, exactly. It has kind of a lot of a lot of movement to it. <laughs> wow. So folks, we, what we've done here is we've stood up and you were in the pop top the, that you built. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that uh, you're probably 5'10", 5'11"? 5'10". 5'10". And you're standing with plenty of head clearance. Mm -hmm. And it, you got this enormous view from up here and all the windows open. That's correct. So you got, I can, once we stood up, I felt a real draft, a real airflow. Mm -hmm. uh, really nice. And we're, we're gonna have another video where we describe how he built it, so we're not going to go into details now. But I wanted you to see the that he can when he steps in, he can stand fully upright. I can too. I also wanted another thing that was really important to me in my van was that I wanted to be able to do everything without raising the top. Right. Um, so that in, if I'm in a situation where it's cold, or I just want right. privacy, or I just don't want to be noticed. You know, whatever. Like, there's nothing in here that I can't do. It's just more cramped with the top down. And you have a lot of storage up here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was one of the benefits to doing it the way that I did it was that I got storage um, here. So these rolled up things, these are insulated liners that I made for the uh -huh. pop top. So I can use it when the weather's colder and the heater can still keep up with it. Um, and then I also, set that over here, I also, like, the way the... The top was shaped, um, I was able to store this. This is a tabletop that I made, and I have a stand for it. So I have a table there, this piece, which gives me a piece of elevated counter space that I can work on. Right. Because I have a really small kitchen, and yes. so then, you know, I can set my stuff up here, and I can work on my food up here. And you're standing here working at your kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Comfortably, very comfortably. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this takes some getting used to. It's an awkward angle to be cutting food at, but I have space. Right. And okay. counter space is important if you do much cooking. Yeah, exactly. And I like to cook. That's one of the reasons that I wanted a full kitchen. And then these are... More storage in back. Yeah, and I made them as drawers. So they're not latched right now, so they keep slipping around. But, um, but basically, so when the top is down, I can still pull them out and get whatever I want out of there. All of these kinds of things, like little fabric containers, there's a whole line of them down there. And so they're just handy places where I mm -hmm. keep basically all of my, all of my, you know, stuff that I need to reach for. So your Astro is uh, all wheel drive. Um, yeah, actually there's a simple swap you can do where you put in the transfer case out of a blazer. Really? So it's part-time four wheel drive now. Oh, you've done that? I did that. So you have a, a high-low transfer case? That's correct. Wow, then you're true four-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. And I did that because um, I don't like snow that much, so the all-wheel drive wasn't so important. Um, but I do like to go on, um, you know, backcountry roads where you, where you sometimes need the four-wheel drive. I'm not like an extreme rock crawler kind of guy. I no. didn't build it for that. No. Um, mostly, I like the adage that you shouldn't use your four-wheel drive to get into stuff. You should use it to get out of stuff. Right. <laughs> so, so I'm sort of more that type. But, um, but definitely a lot of our parks and forests, they have these great back roads that right. you can go on and you can camp out there. And um, yeah, I love going and exploring places like that. So, And you also put a lift on it. That's correct. That's a body lift or? Uh, it's a combination. Um, it's a two inch body lift and uh, the rest is suspension. So you're going anywhere with a two, two speed uh, transfer case. Uh, I can tires. get all the places that I want to go. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would, I would really envy you this rig. Then. I mean, that <laughs> makes this 
pretty spectacular to my Thank mind. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of what I envisioned when I started building it. Um, was that ability to go to the kind of places that I wanted to go and still have around me the things that I need to take care of my health. And I had to get this um, tire carrier made uh, because with the Dutch doors, if you put a tire right there, you can't work the doors anymore. So it has a thing that lets the tire swing forward. And uh, then we open up. Um, and so here's the back of my van. Hopefully things aren't too big a mess in here. All right, it's not too awful. No, it's very good. So, so I have that bin has all my hand tools and supplies like that. This bin has all my power tools because I don't know what kinds of projects I might be called to work on. So I kind of carry all that stuff with me. Right. Um, and then under here, I have sort of more automotive supplies. Here are my window screens that I made. So I just did a fairly simple system. Just snaps. Handful of snaps and then, you know, Velcro on the sides. Made it so that, um, uh, you know, so they work with the, it allows the Dutch doors to still open and close. Right. Um, while I keep that reasonably fly free. Yes, that, that's really great. And then here you can see uh, earlier I mentioned about the bed going, um, you know, being able to move up and down. So it, it's based on using some linear actuators. So I have one of those on each side. And this, this holds the back of those sort of sliding boxes that I showed you. So now we're inside and you have swiveled the bed back. Mm -hmm. And that gives you more room where we're standing. Is that yeah, right? exactly. So I can um, I can have full access to the kitchen, the toilet, whatever, without having to, you know, without having to fold the bed up. Um, when I'm in, you know, when when the back is closed up, the bed comes up here, as we saw in an earlier shot. Right. And so, in order to access, like the toilet, for example, I have to fold the bed back up. But this is kind of nice for you know, be in camp for a few days or something like that. It's also kind of under where the cooler is. I don't know if you want me to get into this. Um, you know, that's where like my batteries, mm -hmm. inverter, electrical, that's whatever electrical. all that is. So um, how much solar do you have? So I have uh, two 85 watt solar panels, um, which was the most I could get in the amount of roof space that I had available at the time. And um, within a couple months after that, of course, somebody started making 100 watt solar panels that fit in the same space. So whatever, someday I'll upgrade. You know, it's fine right now being out here in the desert, you know, with the full sun, it's, uh, it's fine. Um, so what I'm gonna add is a, um, somebody started making a, one of those thin flexible panels right. that would just fit under one of the segments of my bed. So I could keep it there and I'll have an extra plug in. So that'll give me an extra hundred watts that I can plug in. And how do you shower? Okay, so right now, uh, basically I've been using a pan and I heat up some water on the stove and, uh, and I do it. But I have projects in the works. So I have a space under here where I'm gonna put a little, a small like two gallon tank that I can just put water in from a solar shower or whatever. I mean, obviously if I can be outside, I can use a solar shower, but. So anyway, I'll be able to put some hot water in there and it'll be plumbed to the hot water tap on my faucet. And then um, next time I'm back in Sonoma County and I can borrow the sewing machine again, I'm going to make a, um, uh, basically a shower enclosure that has a bottom and sides and I'll just make it out of shower curtain material so I can fold it up in very little space. Then I'll just be able to stand inside, use the sprayer from my sink and use that as my shower. So I wanted my propane system to be safe and um, I really like having to not, having to not think about it much. And so I wanted an under, under van tank. I went under there and I measured and I measured and I measured and I measured and I finally found that I could put in the propane tank that they make for early VW Eurovan campers. And it was like a really precise fit in, the, in amongst the paraphernalia that's already under the van. Yeah, so I came up with a fairly simple mounting system because I don't know how to weld. So. Um, so I didn't want to make uh, fancy brackets. And, um, and then I plumbed it uh, much the same way as the Volkswagens are plumbed. 
and so I feel really good about it. I just pull up, I have it filled, it holds, um, uh, well, technically it's a 4.3 gallon tank, which, um, which if you know propane, that actually means it holds 3.4 gallons. And, um, uh, and then I just, I don't have to mess with it. My stuff works and um, I'm not putting tanks inside my van and it doesn't take up any space inside uh, or on the back because um, I have plans for the back of my van so I didn't want to have the propane tank hanging on the back and that sort of thing. Uh, that's a vent for the fridge. It's an all-electric refrigerator but uh, sometimes when it's in hot weather the heat kind of builds up behind it so that lets the heat escape so it doesn't work as hard. Um, this is the vent for the composting toilet where that fan comes out. This next vent over here is for the battery box. Mm -hmm. So I did a sealed battery box and it vents to the outside um, for safety. And then this is the fill for the water tank, mm -hmm. which is located underneath where the spare tire used to be, which is why the spare tire is on the back. Well, Gavio, thank you so much. I mean, uh, you know, I, every, every video I say how much I've learned and this, this may be, you may be the most creative guy I've ever seen in, <laughs> in, in what you've done here. Uh, in well, fact, we're you. shooting three videos and I'm not sure we... We could have shot more. Uh, I think that just comes down to you being that engineer, interior designer that mm -hmm. allows you to think a little differently and a little more creatively. Yeah, that and also being sort of obsessed with small spaces. Right. I'm used to, you know, creative solutions. And it's one of the reasons that I like working in small spaces. Those have always been my favorite clients is because um, it really draws me into that sort of next level of creativity. Like, yeah. how can we really get this to sing? Everything I could ever think about, you have done. <laughs> so I'm just Thank really you. away. Well, believe it or not, I thought of some others that I haven't done yet. But <laughs> come, back, come back and video me in a year. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Well, it's a promise. It's a date. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Gavi. I really am impressed. And uh, folks, I, I know you have been amazed and awed by what you've seen here. So if you got some good ideas out of it, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.